Hello, you're listening to the broadcast from the New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We're located on Highway 411, just three buildings from the intersection of Highways 411 and 95. Our email address is simply our initials, followed by the word mailbox at gmail.com, which is nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. We meet Sundays for teaching at 10 a.m., followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Brother Marcus Severance is a pastor. Now, let's listen in to the message. God, your word is alive. His name is Jesus. And Father, who glory, he loves us this morning. And God, I thank you for that love. I thank you, Father, a love, God, that nobody can, no man can even fathom the love that you have for your people even this morning. God, I ask you, Father, to open our hearts to hear what you would have us to say. God, I give you all the praise and all the glory for what you're going to do in this place today, Father. God, first of all, before we go any farther, I want to thank you for all that you've done for us. I want to thank you for eternal life, for all the times that you've forgiven us, for all the terrible things that we've done. God, and most of all, this morning, I want to thank you for the blood of the cross, for the blood, God, that you shed for my sins and everybody under the sound of my voice. God, we honor you this morning because you are the King of kings. And not only are you the King of kings, God, you're getting ready to come. You could come today. You could come any moment for your church. God, it's not a game that we're playing this morning. God, God, we honor you and we glorify you. And we ask you now to come and minister your church. God, open our hearts to hear what thus saith the Spirit of the Lord to the church this morning. God, we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. And the people of God said amen and amen. I want to just share something before I go into this word. This is a little bit different this morning, but I want to share this with you because it's very important. In Christian, it's called eschatology. It talks about the book of Revelation is the core of it. That's what they call it, eschatology. And basically it's a study where people look at the book of of Revelation and they look at it in four different ways. And what's, what's going to happen? You know, some people say it, it's happening now. Some people say it's already taken place. So I, wanna, I always want to talk about this for just a moment. Everybody listen to me. In, in Christian eschatology, the first approach is, is called the futures approach. This is what I believe. This is what most mainstream Christians believe. The first approach. Called futurist, called fut- which means Revelation is seen as referring to events which as yet have not come to pass, but will come to pass at the end of the age and at the end of this world. So that's that's the the approach that that I've studied all my life and looked at and, and read. And you know, I've heard there's there's a there's a teaching right now that's out that, that's completely it's it's a deception. They they're trying to take the book of Revelation, put it out of order. They're trying to take it from the back to the middle to the front. God is a God of order, church. God is not a God of confusion. The second approach is called the Preterist approach, where Revelation refers to the events of the first century, which showed the struggle of Christianity to survive the persecutions of the Roman Empire. Because, you know, there was so much symbolism and there was so many things that Christians would do. You know, when they were being persecuted, remember that's where the fish came from. They would be in the catacombs and... And they would walk up and they wouldn't say nothing. They would draw a fish. And if the other one drew a fish, they knew they were of the same sect. Which was, of course, their sect was not a sect. It was a relationship with Christ. So this, this is what the, the preterist approach says. Let me go on. And then you have the historicist approach. Where Revelation provides a broad view of history and passages in Revelation are identified with major historical events and people. Which I don't know where they get that from. But the fourth approach is called the idealist approach or the symbolic approach. The events of Revelation are neither past nor future, but are purely symbolic dealing with the ongoing struggle and ultimate triumph of good over evil. And there's a lot of truth in that, that one also, but there is no doubt in my mind that Jesus Christ, I'm talking about the King, is soon to come. And so there are, there are three things this morning for I even preach this message. That I, if I don't t- say this first, if you don't get this first, 
But there's three things that I want to go back and I want to encourage everybody, including myself. Every one of us. There's not anybody in here, number one. I know that Jesus wants everybody in here to be ready when He comes, but even more than that, He wants everybody in here to be saved and to be born again and to be washed in His blood and to be ready for eternal life. So these are the three things. The Lord told me these things will come to pass. These things will and are taking place. And you know, I'm not against ball games, and I'm not against school, and I'm not against work, and I'm not against having things. I'm not against anything, but I'll tell you one thing, in the midst of it, I'm looking up. In the midst of it, I'm making sure that I'm right with God. In the midst of it, I'm watching and I'm praying. And that's what we all, all, all need to be doing. All of us. That's where we need to live. That's where we need to breathe. That's where we need to have our being. And if you're made to sit, if you're made to be quiet, if there's something going on in your life and, it, it, and you're not in a real good place right now, that's a great place to be. I've been in that place where I've had to sit, where I've had to be quiet, where I've been under attack. And that was the time that I constantly was in fellowship in constant contact with God. Because let me warn you about one thing. One of the things God said to tell you is be not too busy. Don't be too busy to forget about God. We can get, that's a tool. If there's ever been a tool of the devil, if there's ever been something that he'll do, it's to try to keep us too busy. Amen. If we're too busy to pray, we're too busy. If we're too busy to come to church, we're too busy. If we're too busy to find God and honor God and read God's Word, we're too busy. We need to be busy about the things of God. Joel just said it from the heart of God. There's people that are perishing, church. There's people in hell right now if they could be given one more ch chance, one more opportunity. But here's the three things. I'm getting there. I, I know I'm, I hope I'm not meddling, but I'm going to say it because I've got to honor God and I've got to obey God. Number one, strive to enter in. God said tell the church to strive to enter in. The Scripture talks about the straight gate. The Bible says straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth to life. And He said there would be few that would go in there out the other day. They were having this huge uh, party down here at the uh, Harley Davidson motorcycle shop on 321 when I was coming home. I mean, they were honky tonking and drinking and going on and crying. I'm thinking, man, and God said, that's the wide way. He said, no, that's the broad way. And that's the wide way. I said, man, God, if we could just get all these people in the church, if we could get all these people saved. But he already told us how it was going to be in the last days. He said in the last days, he said, there would be a remnant of believers. that Listen to this preacher. I'm, he said, secondly, let me go on. I'm gonna, I don't want to get off on something. I want to I obey him. Number one, strive, he said, to enter in. Number two, set your mark on God. Set your mark on him. I, I told somebody one time to set a mark on the wall. To set a mark on the path. To put a mark. To, to put a line. To put a plus. To put whatever you've got to do to set a mark. And God wants us not. You don't want to miss that mark. Amen. You don't want to miss that mark. You know, God's at the door. I can see Him. He's sitting at the door. Josh is back there in the door. And God's right at the door. And the only reason that He's not stepped through the door into this realm yet to get us, the only reason is because God's saying, hold on. Let me just have one more day, son. Jesus is ready to come. Jesus, let me just preach a little bit now. Jesus wants to come. Jesus is ready to come get us. Christians are crying out. There's Christians all over the world that aren't having it as good as us. They're being killed and slaughtered and persecuted. They're being thrown in prison, having their properties taken away, watching their families killed right in front of them, so they're having their children torn asunder. And here we sit in our palladial palace. But let me tell you something. God is getting ready to come back. He's coming back for a church that has made themselves ready. Amen. He's coming back for a people that set their mark on Him, that's looking for Him. And God said to guard your heart. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Guard it. Keep it. Guard your heart. Keep it right. Keep it pure. Keep it holy. Guard your eyes. God, I mean, mean, sometimes you may have to look away, men. Sometimes you may have to look away, women. It's, it's got to become a mindset. 
the devil is roaring. That's why the church has been under attack. That's why some of you have been so beat down. That's why some of you have been so under a, a cloud. It's like you've been confused. It's like you're this. You don't feel this way. You don't feel good because the devil knows. I'm talking to you that your his time is short and so is ours here. I believe if you believe it, say amen. So here we go. Here's my message this morning to you. It's called a clear, a clear and present danger. Today, this day, we're going to be with him in paradise. We're going to see him. He told that thief that because time was running out. That thief wanted to know that everything was going to be all right as he because he knew that something was going to happen. He knew that that he didn't have long. This is a revelation from the Holy Ghost to me. But Jesus spoke these words. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, This day you shall be with me in paradise. And there was another one on the other side of the cross. That's the reason that I went and I got the cross today. I put two up here. Because we need to make sure that we're on the right side of the cross. That's why the Word needs to move you. That's why the Word needs to draw you. That's why the Word needs to... Like Bill said today, I've, I've had my toes stepped on so many times in life by my preacher. He sat me down. He's, he's, he's told me things when I was young. And I, was I right? No, I was wrong. But he, he rebuked me, not because he hated me, because he loved me. Thank God he did. And I loved him. But I want to tell you something today. That I don't care if anybody in here likes me or not. That's not what I'm worried about, whether you like me or you don't like me. But you don't know the burden that I feel upon me when I know what I'm hearing from God, when I believe with all my heart that He's moments away from coming to this earth. And I want everybody in here to know, I want everybody to know that He has given everybody an opportunity. He has given everybody a chance. And He's been preaching to us for many, many years telling us to prepare. You know why? Because He's going to come one of these days. It's going to be a day just like today. It's going to be a day that nobody's really looking for Him. Everything's going to be, people say it's going to be a terrible time. It's going, it's probably going to be a day just like today, just a normal day like it was in the days of Noah. And all of a sudden, there's going to be a, instead of going to be a, there's going to be a, glory to God. Hallelujah, I feel God. And, and we're going to fly from this place, church. You say, you really believe that, preacher? I don't only believe it, I know it. Let me read. It's a very familiar passage of Scripture. There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth the stress of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring. That word there for the seas and waves roaring, not talking about the literal seas, though they will. Because there's hurricanes and there's a literal roaring. There's tsunamis and I've heard Stone talk all about it. But if you really want me to tell you what that really means prophetically, spiritually, it means that the nations of the world, the people of the world, that's what he's talking about there. With perplex They're going to be roaring. We already see it. We see the battle that's going on in the spiritual realm. We see nations being torn apart. We see terrible things going on in our border. We see things that are happening. How many know that this past week, and this is why God put this in there. He knew that, that we would have the technology. How many have know that the moon is shrinking? How many have seen that article? The moon is actually shrinking as I'm talking right now. There shall be signs in the moon and in the sun. He said, let me just go on. And he said, in the stars and upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, which means they don't know what to do. They don't know how to handle it. Let me tell you why they don't know what to do. Because there's a man that's coming called the Antichrist. There's a leader, a world leader that's coming. It's already being set up. And if, you're, if you don't realize that, if you don't understand that, if you don't see that, then I'll tell you about it. But I'm telling you, it's happening right in front of us. Right here in this little quaint town called Greenback. There's, there's, there's a war that's going on. There's a battle that's raging. There, there is a situation that's going on right now in, in the Middle East that could escalate any moment. I don't believe it's going to yet. I don't believe it's going to happen yet. But I believe this is just another sign that God is near to come. Let me tell you another one. The other day I heard a story about on the Golan Heights how that these cattle got poisoned. And the Bible says that where the carcasses are, everybody knows the Scripture. The Bible says that where the carcasses are, there the eagles shall be gathered together also. And they talked about how 
A lot of people don't know this because you're mainstream media. That's why we got to watch. That's why we've got to stay a, a, alert and we've got to pay attention to what's going on. God will reveal these things if you'll, if you'll seek Him. I don't know. I told my wife I get so excited when I hear from God. People said, man, he's crazy. What's wrong with that guy? I get excited when I...